Uh, it's very important to highlight that uh, the Brazilian IT leaders, leading companies, they are very capable and uh, they um, do know how to engage and uh, succeed not only in the local market but also international markets. Our uh, mission is to complement that by working with uh, uh, leading entities, uh, just to make a reference, Sergio Pessoa, for instance, from Apex is here with us, uh, which is the, the trade and export agency from Brazil, responsible also for uh, leading uh, the discussion with the government and uh, mobilizing resources to facilitate the collaboration globally. As you may know, Brazil is a very diverse country. And uh, the reason why I like to start with this slide is that, that we reinforce our DNA, a DNA that is uh, very much in common with uh, what we find in the US, in Europe. And uh, it's a DNA that is uh, flexible, agile, and through the history, after going through so many moments of uh, overcoming um, you know, the Brazilian society, and uh, main professionals know how to be adaptive and know how to understand and embrace challenges. Oh, I'm sorry. I just received a call. Just a second, I'm sorry. Hello? Yes. I'm sorry, he's not available now? Yeah, it's night there. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> I know, I apologize. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a presentation, I apologize, sorry. You know, I'm sorry, that was a, a CIO they're just uh, uh, rolling out an application now and they need support. But, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is, just tomorrow. But anyways, <laughs> so uh, the time zone, we, you know, it is what it is. You know, we are there. Latin America is right there, ready to have the dialogue, ready to hold hands and, uh, and work on the day-to-day -day challenges and, and issues. Uh, I had a conversation with some colleagues from other regions here, the critical aspect of having a local <coughs> presence that's illustrated here, so you can manage the relationship, you can understand requirements, you can manage that throughout the life cycle of the engagement. And the engagement itself has to be structured in the way that you bring representatives from your uh, onshore, your near, near shore, offshore team to their local uh, to the onshore location so you can build the bond and understand the way how the solution is going to be delivered. And as you know, it's so critical to have the, the culture alignment in order to be successful on those moments. And as you do that, then you have a team that will be able to collaborate effectively. And IBM has been very, extremely successful in Brazil for the last almost 100 years. You know, joining IBM, then you have the main profile companies, uh, including Capgemini, Accenture, Microsoft, Oracle, so HP, and, and the list goes on. Uh, a little bit about uh, the vision, uh, and I will just touch on the vision being one where Brazil is going to be very well positioned, you know, within the next, um, you know, five to ten years. It already is uh, as uh, the seventh, seventh largest IT market in the world, and the ITC, the number goes to the fifth or the fourth uh, position. But there is a program in place right now we call the, IT, the it's ITC 2022. It's a strategic plan being developed in conjunction with Brazilian government, and the goal being to establish Brazil, the ICT industry in Brazil, as, a, as a, the role model and as a reference within the BRICS, uh, countries and uh, as a platform to not only help the social economic and uh, improve the efficiencies within the government but also as a way how to lever leverage strategic uh, innovation to uh, to specific sectors uh, so uh, you know there is a very united effort in Brazil bringing the academia uh, uh, the government and the leading private companies. Uh, briefly, you know, in terms of size, uh, you know, Gartner and others position, for instance, the Brazilian banking industry is the most advanced industry in the world. Uh, and that to, due to many aspects, in addition to the great companies and technology that have available, also, you know, the, the maturity that professionals in Brazil uh, achieved by dealing with the crisis over so many years. Um, so when you think about Brazil in Latin America, or you think about you know, a company that expands into Latin America, due to the economic and the fundamentals that you find in place, Brazil is definitely a place to be and will be the case uh, moving forward. We realize that the global demographics, there are new markets being created, the BRICS being one. 
there is also the trend and the need for and, and the existence of global markets such as in the finance, healthcare, education, and so forth. And you realize that there is there are significant trends um, in terms of uh, you know mobile, uh, uh, cloud, uh, uh, clean tech, and social <laughs> social media. So there are many moving parts, which also introduces us the opportunity. You know, I, I was asked a question earlier, and um, we are not thinking in terms of, uh, you know, we are competing and we are looking for the competition and you feel that, uh, you know, it's a healthy competition. However, I think the key word is really collaboration. And, uh, and we do have an opportunity even within the continent to collaborate to serve the international clients um, if you embrace that as an opportunity. Uh, CIT, it's a, a Brazilian uh, grown company. We started business in 90, 1995. Uh, we were just three guys at that time, so I was one of them starting developing. And the company has been su successful in being really ahead of uh, the market as a, as a strategy to compete, so always investing uh, on, on the technology that we always uh, believe that will be successful and, and streamline years to come. So this has been a strategy so far, and this is what we do uh, to this date. Investing so today we're specialized on mobile, social analytics, and all, all those uh, new forces that are shaping the new IT landscape, you know, and helping our customers to to connect their business, connect their products and services to this new uh, world that is ever changing. Uh, this is uh, this is the wrong uh, session for you, okay? So what we do is and absolutely compete on value. So this is what we. We're here to talk, and, uh, and this is uh, using this foundation of Brazil that has been mentioned here, not only by Paulo, but other, uh, in other sessions, right? We have probably the biggest, not probably, we have the biggest uh, IT internal market in Brazil, and, and, and all those uh, big global companies have been, have been in Brazil for 60. Uh, global, Johnson Johnson has been in Brazil for 80 years. Yep. Right. So, so local companies are used to serve this very demanding market uh, in a global level. Uh, so this, this is a very skilled, with a lot of business acumen, workforce. Right? And what this workforce can do in terms of value. Right? Uh, let me just try to portray in a very short way what we can do. I think all the creativity, proactivity, uh, we can critique what we're developing uh, and creating for our customers so they actually influence on the outcome. So we can we get actually a different result, not only coding against stable requirements. Right? So if you have processes that are stable, that doesn't happen to have the, the you know, Two weeks ago, this new strategic initiative coming on, and this has to be delivered for yesterday morning. So, and I believe that those doesn't this this process. I can believe that this doesn't happen on on the ledger or your accounts payable. There are own processes that are very important for your competitiveness, and those are the processes that we really help our customers with. I lead the commercial marketing team for Johnson Johnson. Uh, I tell people I've got one of the best jobs in the world. Uh, first of all, I work for a tremendous company, Johnson & Johnson, right? We're, our, our mission in life is to help people with quality of life one person at a time around the world. Uh, very rewarding to get up every day and do that. Even more incredible is I get to live in a digital space. I've got a global team that's all about delivering social, digital, analytics, mobility, some of the best technologies in the world. And um, I'll build on tools comments earlier in the day about Johnson & Johnson and, and, and value. Um, I believe IT is focused on value. I am a business partner in Johnson & Johnson. I am not about just cost cutting. I'm, I'm about business value. And hopefully you're gonna hear that throughout my presentation. So in 2008, we, uh, we were in a different place as far as IT was concerned. Again, Johnson Johnson, very large, 250 operating companies, very decentralized culture. And when you think about that, there's so many different IT vendors at that point, and the strategy for most IT vendors were divide and conquer, 
right? Don't, don't be very strategic with Johnson & Johnson. And our spend was really getting out of control. We wanted to be more strategic in how we were managing that. Um, we were not really getting the value of our spend. We were not sharing our knowledge. And we really didn't have the rich benchmarking data to go off and negotiate with our different vendors to get the optimal spend for the overall IT spend. How are we going to work and optimize our efficiencies as one IT organization? Part of that was to creating de delivery centers throughout the world. I'll show a little bit about the delivery centers that, that my team's responsible for. But within application services, um, we have about 5,000 contractors in our team. Uh, we manage um, about a $275 million portfolio for Johnson & Johnson. So a lot of work is coming through the organization. And what we're really looking to do now is get that global scale of our spend, but also have the ability to deliver in a regional manner. So that you think about some of the regional requirements are much different, and that's really going to be essential about what is that user experience. Uh, we spent a lot of time focused on our global sourcing strategy. You know, thinking in terms of how are we maximizing our spend, we took from hundreds of vendors down to fewer strategic partners. And when I think in terms of what we were able to deliver, now we have a much better value proposition for Johnson & Johnson. Some of the conversations were earlier about size and scale. We have that. But in my space, where we're responsible for, niche is really important. And when you think about innovation, when you think about social media, when you think about agile development, you need the ability to innovate, to be creative, and you need to be able to reach the marketplace in a manner that's very rapid. And Stephanie talked about that earlier, about the struggles of having agile development in an offshore model. Well, we've been doing it, and we've had a success in doing that. But obviously, it takes a lot of work, and it takes strong partners. One thing very unique about my group is our global lab network. So we have seven global labs across the globe in Johnson & Johnson that we run ideation sessions. We run proof of concepts. We run prototypes. So when our brands come in and meet with us, it's a very different experience. We take tremendous pride when they walk in into one of our labs and they can't figure out what's going on. They say, this can't be IT. Are you an outside agency? Is this part of Johnson & Johnson? Who actually runs these labs? It's an IT organization that's focused on value, innovation, and creativity. And much of the sessions that, that we lead here are all really business development. It's about giving a different experience for our partners that they expect and they often get outside when they partner with agencies and other, other parts of the, uh, the industry. Specifically to my team, as I said, it's all about digital. We manage a portfolio of just, uh, just north of $60 million in the digital space. That includes social media, social listening, SEO, analytics, brand analytics, consumer dashboarding, um, as well as just the pure web development that comes through to digital delivery. Um, it's a very dynamic space. Often we're partnering, but sometimes we're competing with agencies. You know, how do they go off? And, and, and our, our challenge is to meet their pace of development. We need to be agile. We need to be rapid. We need to be innovative. And it's not about, you haven't heard me talk about cost cutting. You know, we're business leaders. We manage value. We understand the importance of cost, but we also understand the, the ability of delivering quickly and bringing value to market. If we deliver one of our assets late and we miss a campaign, we may miss a $10, $20 million opportunity for one of our brands. Specifically, I want to get down to a little bit about Brazil and how we've scaled up over the years. Um, although this is dated back to 2011, you get the picture. We have scaled up over the years and built out a partnership. Um, again, size and scale. Generally, my team will deliver anywhere between 600 to 700 projects a year. That's a lot of work. Um, as I said, it's about 60, $65 million portfolio that we manage for Johnson & Johnson. Um, most of our business cycles are on a 90 to 120 day cycle, so it's rapid deployment. Um, this is just a, a sense of how important the partnership has developed over the years. Right now on my team, I've got about 50 J&J people around the globe, but I've also got about 450 to 500 partners on my staff as well. So it's a rather large team focused on digital delivery across our brands. Some of the unique capabilities that I think um, come from Brazil is certainly around UI, creativity, innovation, as well as rich process. And the combination of that is often hard to find. 
Every culture has a little bit different to offer, but these are some of the things that we leverage out of our team in Brazil. Um, different, and as I said, we've got teams in, in India, we've got teams in China, we've got them around the world, but these are some unique capabilities that we do get from our team in Brazil. Um, and I want to emphasize here, it's often overlooked, the st strong process background. We do Agile. We really partner with our teams in Brazil to launch Agile about 2008 when we were started because we could not be successful in a waterfall. And if you go to one of our centers and our partners in Brazil, you'll get an experience of what Agile is all about. It's not just a methodology. It's a business approach to how we deliver. You, know, you think in terms of, of what the culture of, comes from Brazil. And, and Atul and I were talking out on one of the breaks, you know, where you learn. And, and one of the things we stress in the US is we want our children, as they're growing up through the education system, to think out of the box. They're often asked, what do you think? They're often on case studies talking about you know, free thought. Um, where some of the other cultures, you don't get that. It's all about very rigid um, education system. But we're leveraging some of the universities in Brazil to bring innovation. We're doing a project in Peru. And I've got a, a member of my management team here, Nigel Story, who can give a little background. Nigel, if you could just you know, give a little background on what we're doing in Peru. It's about tuberculosis and something that, again, came out of Cradle Lab. And both of these examples are with our partners in Brazil that we are delivering this with. What's really exciting about the Creative Lab is when people come in, within a very short period of time, we take an idea and we develop a proof of concept or a prototype. You heard a lot today about leveraging talent globally and how you get the best of talent no matter where it is because there are smart people everywhere. For us, this was really exciting to partner with um, a team in Brazil from CINT that worked on a project to solve an epidemic in Peru. So we had the New Jersey-based employees working with the Pennsylvania-based employees with the business problem of, hey, we've got this new brand, Certuro. It's meant to solve the, the, or to treat this epidemic that is tuberculosis, and it's a really big problem. We need to assess this market and understand, okay, how can we do a better job in Peru? And through that exercise, and through a lot of innovation, and a lot of partnership, and a lot of brainstorming, within a one-month time period, we were able to develop a proof of concept, which just went out to to show our R&D team members, this is how we can go to the health professionals in those countries locally in those markets and tackle this problem. So when you go to the healthcare clinics, what you see is you see a lot of paper, you see the doctors being inundated with a lot of data that they can't parse through quickly. And so by providing those, those healthcare pr uh, pr clinics and uh, the professionals that work in them with these tools, these mobile tools that they wouldn't have had otherwise, they're able to attack that epidemic of 30,000 people in Peru having tuberculosis each year and having much better treatment and adherence to their treatment. So that's just a quick story. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Nigel. And it's, it's important. I just wanted to give real cases of where IT is innovating for business solutions and how we're partnering together with our, our our, our team in Brazil to deliver these solutions. And it is about rapid deployment. It is about speed to value, but it's making a difference in people's lives. This is digital adherence and it's saving lives in Peru today. And that's the type of change that I would encourage everybody to think in terms of when we think in terms of what IT can bring, it's value. So tell me about an organization that may be here now and they want to figure out when do I go? Do I go? Do I go at a time? There's a conference there. Do I tie it? Do I wait to the World Cup? When, when, when should we go? <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, thank you, Kirk. Uh, absolutely. Uh, just as an example, uh, Apex uh, with the Brascom. We, we've conducted so many events, uh, not only in the U.S. And that's an opportunity, like here, for example, where we we'll make the connection, but also an event that we have conducted in the last few years and going to happen again on October 24th um, is a, an event in partnership with Economist. That event will take place um, in Sao Paulo. It's a day and a half. Um, we will be delighted to understand uh, in our, your interest and um, eventually you know, uh, facilitate you to join us. It's called the uh, Brascom Global IT Forum. So in that discussion, we're not only going to have uh, ministers and the leaders from the Brazilian government, as well as Mike has been a great friend in sharing the success stories in Brazil, as well as uh, you know, analysts and others that can have an open, independent dialogue 
about uh, what's going on in Brazil, the opportunities for collaboration, uh, as well as uh, you know any specific um, opportunity that you see in collaborating there. Thank you for, for the question.